Hi, I'm Eric. Are you a teacher, educator, student, parent, administrator, or someone else who is interested in exploring flipped teaching and the flipped classroom? If so, you've come to the right place. In this professional development lesson, we are going to learn how to flip your class to improve student success and engagement. Welcome to E.J. Fullerton, where class is always in session. I've had the privilege of presenting this resource at many different professional development conferences, including Ontario's premier educational technology conference, Bring IT Together. Now, I have an opportunity to share my learning and experience with a wider audience on YouTube. Whether you are new to the idea of a flipped classroom, or you are experienced with flipped teaching, I hope you will learn something new with me today. I would love for you to be engaged with this lesson. Please click on the card at the top right corner of the screen and answer the poll question, are you new to the idea of a flipped classroom? Also, feel free to leave a comment below about your questions, wonderings, challenges, or experiences with flipped teaching and the flipped classroom. I will do my best to personally respond to every comment. Before we continue, please click on the logo in the bottom right corner of the screen to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate every one of my subscribers. Thanks so much! To begin, I'm going to share some of my thoughts and experiences with the flipped classroom model. Now, by no means is this the only way to flip your classroom. There are many different ideas and great ways out there to flip your classroom. What I'm going to discuss here is the model that I found worked best for my students and me. It also gives us a reference for the remainder of our time together, so when I refer to a flipped classroom, this is what I'm referring to. I will start by comparing what I think is a more traditional classroom that I'm sure many of us are familiar with and compare that to a flipped classroom model. In my experience, a traditional classroom is one in which the teacher lectures from the front of the room while students copy notes and maybe ask some questions. But guess what? The only students asking the valuable questions are the ones who are engaged in the learning. Then students are given work to complete for homework. Now. I know, I know, there is obviously more to it than that, but you get the gist. So our students are now sitting at home, perhaps without their peers, without their teacher, and that's when the frustration begins or maybe continues. For students who didn't understand the lesson that was delivered in class or have some misunderstandings, they can be left feeling frustrated, angry, and some even begin to develop what is often referred to as, in the case of math, math anxiety. It's a common situation occurring daily around the globe. In contrast is the flipped classroom model. Again, this is just one example of a flipped classroom model that I chose to use in my class. Instead of assigning questions or work for homework, I assign a video lesson. Students go to my website to access the embedded YouTube video. They watch the video, pausing, rewinding, and rewatching as much as they choose, and answer five reflection questions about what they've just learned. They then come to class the next day with knowledge of, in my case, a math concept, but the same also applies to science, history, geography, and other subjects. During class time, students participate in a variety of learning activities to solidify and deepen their subject knowledge. Continuing with math as an example, Students could be engaged in a three-part lesson consisting of a minds-on activity to get us thinking mathematically and ready for more learning, followed by an action activity that could involve a small group exploration or investigation. Some days, for example, we might get out into the environment and interact with math in real life. Other activities might include individual or partner work, a blended learning or online activity, or maybe even all of the above. At the end of the activities, students participate in a consolidation or debrief activity where they are able to share their learning and ideas with the class. Because the working questions are being explored and solved in class, and because an educator and even their peers can support them throughout the work, the potential is there for every student to leave with a firm understanding of the subject and lesson content. The goal would be for students to no longer feel frustrated by the work or have a major misunderstanding of the concepts. Still unsure about adopting a flipped classroom model? When I was conducting my research about flipped teaching and the flipped classroom, I came across this graphic showing the intellectual engagement of Canadian students. I live in Canada, so I found these statistics very powerful. 
If you are viewing from outside Canada, I would be interested in learning about the engagement levels for students in your country. Leave a comment below or click the card and share the engagement levels where you are. As you can see from the graphic, beginning in grade 5 and continuing through to the end of high school, students are becoming less and less engaged in their learning and school. At the time, I was teaching grade 8, where statistically only 57% of students are intellectually engaged. That means that there are about 43% of students who are not engaged in the learning. This is obviously a concern. For me as an educator, I wanted to do something about this for my students. I didn't want 43% of my students to be disengaged. I wanted to challenge myself and see how close to 100% engagement I could get from my students. When I learned about a flipped classroom, I decided to look into it further and give it a try. Do you have any questions, wonderings, or ideas to share? Leave a comment below and share so we can all learn together. Before I started a flipped teaching model in my classroom, I began by conducting a lot of research. I wanted to make sure that the instructional changes I was about to make would be the right instructional moves for my students. After all, I wanted them to be even more successful. I wasn't about to experiment with their futures. I started by reading several articles and blogs by other teachers and educators who had experienced with flipping their classroom. I also watched a few hours of YouTube videos and TED Talks. I wanted to learn as much about the flipped classroom and flipped teaching as I could. Thorough research is something that I highly recommend before you start. And maybe you are doing that already by watching this video. Thanks! I think the more you learn about the flipped classroom before you start, the better it will be for both you and your students. After I felt that I had finished the research, I created my own YouTube channel and began recording videos. Now, I started creating videos because I had an interest in video creation and production, and I also wanted to see if I could reach an audience that extended beyond the four walls of my classroom. Now, don't feel like you need to create your own videos and certainly don't let that hold you back from flipping your class. There's so much great content out there that is free for you to use. I encourage you to take a look at my channel. I have lots of great videos already posted and I am continuing to post a few new videos each week. If there is an instructional video that you would like but can't find on my channel, by all means, let me know in a comment. If I make a video based on one of your suggestions, I will give you and your class a shout out in the video and in the description. Sounds pretty great, doesn't it? But also check out the other amazing resources and creators on YouTube. I then created a website to post my videos. That way, students wouldn't get lost or distracted by other YouTube channels on their way to finding my videos. Having a class website provided a safe and easy way for students to access the video lessons. With each video, I also made a slide deck available to download as a PDF. This was just one of many ways that I could provide some differentiation for students who had difficulty or are unable to take their own notes. Any student, or anyone for that matter, can download the notes and even print them for their binder if they so desire. My class website also had a discussion board where students could go and interact with each other about each lesson. Having my own discussion board helped protect students' privacy and provided them with a safe place for discussion separate from the YouTube comment area. Finally, I asked students to complete a reflection about what they learned using a Google form, but more about that later. So before I actually started with my class, I had all of these pieces in place. Now for the flipped classroom in action. As I stated earlier, I assigned a video lesson for students as homework. This really put the control of the learning in the students' hands. They could pause, rewind, and rewatch the lesson as many times as needed for them to fully understand a concept. No longer were my lessons lost to time. Likewise, students with a firm understanding could skip through parts of the lesson at their choosing. So, for example, after watching the instruction, a student could skip through some of the examples if they didn't need to watch. Students really were in control of their learning. Already, they were becoming more engaged. After students completed watching the lesson, they needed to answer these five questions on a Google form. Now, I didn't make these questions or get this idea myself. 
Remember all the research I did? This is a result of that. First, students needed to summarize the lesson and give a specific example about what they learned. The reason for this specific example is so that students wouldn't simply just copy the title of the video. You know, in this lesson I learned about the Pythagorean theorem. This exercise is a metacognitive piece and a reflective piece for students to engage and think deeper about the lesson. Next, they needed to explain something they understood really well, another important reflection, and something they found confusing. This question was very important for me as their teacher. I could use the responses from this question to help drive my lesson the following day. For example, I could quickly form small groups based on their responses and meet with students for a targeted lesson and targeted instruction. Instead of providing the instruction to the full class, I could meet with a smaller group of students who needed extra support while others engaged in a learning activity. Finally, students completed the fifth question, making a real-life connection to the lesson. Far too often, I had students ask me, why do I have to learn this? When will I ever use it in real life? Now, I can turn the question around and ask it of them. When finished, students clicked submit and I got a nice spreadsheet with all the responses. What that allowed me to do was copy and paste the class's responses into a word cloud. If you are not familiar with the word cloud, the more often a word appears in the document, the larger the word becomes. Conversely, the less referenced words appear smaller. I used the word cloud to begin the lesson. We looked at the large words and discussed if they are important and deserve to be large. An important part of the conversation was why we thought that. I would often ask the question, what makes you say that? We did the same for the smaller words. Are there any small words that are important and should be large? It was a great way to start thinking about math, the lesson, and the activities to come. At this point, I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk in more detail about the video creation side of things, as well as some challenges you may face and possible solutions, and look at some student feedback. If that doesn't interest you, I need to decide to leave at this point, then I thank you for your time and wish you a great day. Before you go, if you haven't already done so, please click that subscribe button and give this video a like. For those of you sticking around, let's continue. As we move into this section, I should mention that at the time of this recording, I have no affiliation or sponsorship with any of these products. I simply share them as products I enjoy using and highly recommend. In my early videos, I used Smart Notebook as the writing and display software. I have since switched over to Sketchbook. I found that Smart Notebook had a slight delay in the writing, but it was enough of a delay to make the writing on the screen difficult. I found that Sketchbook has no such delay and is easy to use. I have a Wacom Bamboo tablet for the writing. I use ScreenFlow for the screen and voice recording. I previously used QuickTime, but I needed to create separate voice and screen recordings then match them together in editing. Using ScreenFlow eliminated that editing challenge and also provides me with high quality video and audio. My microphone is a Logitech headset with mic and I also have a lapel mic. As you can hear, the audio quality is good, but it could certainly be better. I hope to be able to purchase a better microphone soon. All my editing is done using Final Cut Pro 10. I began using iMovie, which is fantastic and user-friendly software and great for anyone just starting out. But I was looking to do more with my editing and made the switch to Final Cut Pro 10. I found the transition from iMovie to Final Cut Pro 10 very easy and fluid. Once the editing is complete and my video has rendered, I upload them to YouTube and embed a link in my website. Like anything, a flipped classroom is not without its technical difficulties and considerations. One of which is what to do when not all students have internet access or a device at home to watch the video lessons. It is crucial as educators that we ensure that we are not leaving any student out because they don't have access to the technology. For me, the solution to this problem came easy. Most mornings, I would be in my classroom at least 45 minutes before the start of school. Since I was just puttering around the room and getting things ready for the day, it was easy for me to open the classroom for students to come in once they got off the bus or got dropped off, grab a device, like an iPad for example, and watch the lesson. Most mornings, I would have at least five students 
voluntarily come in and watch the lesson for that day. It didn't matter to me when students watched the video, as long as it was before class, so having students come in early before school, when I was already there anyway, was an easy solution. Which brings me to the next question I often get during this presentation. What happens when a student does not watch the video prior to the next class? Another great use of the Google Form is it allows me to see who watched the video lesson and responded and who didn't. Before class, I can quickly check the spreadsheet and make note of who didn't respond. At the beginning of class, as students enter the room, I can get the students who didn't watch the video on a device right away. Then, once they finish watching, they can join their peers in whatever activity or investigation we are engaged in that day. This also works very well for students who are absent from school. No longer are my lessons lost to time. When students are absent, they can still keep up with the lessons and not fall behind their peers, at least with the lesson concepts. The same is also true during those Canadian winters when the school buses might be cancelled due to poor weather and road conditions. By posting video lessons online, students can still access the lessons from home or the local library or community centre. Those snow days don't necessarily have to mean lost learning time. The next consideration I alluded to earlier in the presentation, but would like to go back to in a little more detail. On average, for one of my 5-10 to 10 minute videos, it takes me about 3-4 to four hours to create, edit, and post. Of course, the shorter the video and the simpler the production, the less time it takes. To date, I think the video that took me the longest to create and to get out there was the graphing rotations video. In part because I was still new to the recording and editing, but also because of the time to create all the different segments, edit everything together, render, and upload the video. In the end, it was probably slightly over 6 hours for that 15 minute lesson. So it really varies. I don't tell you this to scare you or turn you away from creating your own videos, but just to be honest and transparent with you, so you know what to expect. Final point here, what to do with all the extra class time. When you think about it, by flipping your class you are removing the lesson portion from the time spent in class. Whether this is 10, 20, or 30 minutes, it will be extra time and you need to plan for that. I don't need to tell you what to do with that extra time. You know your students and yourself far better than I do, but I can leave you with some thoughts and a request. First thought, ask yourself, why this for these students at this time? Be purposeful and intentional with your class time. Second thought, also ask yourself, how will the use of this time impact the learning, knowledge, and understanding for my students? Is this a positive impact, or could the class time be better allocated? Which brings me to my request. Please, please, please don't waste that additional time with busy work. Time is precious, and as teachers and educators, we always wish we had more of it. Even 10 additional minutes each day adds up to a lot over the period of a week, semester, or year. Let's make sure we really use that time in the best way possible for our students. Do you have any questions, comments, ideas, or maybe you've experienced some challenges with the flipped classroom yourself? Leave a comment below and let us know. That way we can all continue to learn from each other. To bring this presentation to a close, I would be remiss if I didn't share with you the voice of some students who experienced the flipped classroom. Their names have been changed to student 1, 2, 3, and 4 to protect their identity, but each are real students who shared their experience with me. Student 1 enjoyed the video because it took less time than doing traditional homework. This student also found doing the work at school helpful because there are less distractions compared to doing the work at home. This student made use of the rewatch and rewind to improve their understanding. Student 2 also enjoyed the videos better than the traditional lesson because watching me up at the front of the classroom is boring. <laughs> no offense taken. But it certainly would be a safe assumption that this student probably fell into that 43% of students who are not engaged with their lessons. I am happy to report that with the videos, the student not only skyrocketed in their level of engagement, but their success also greatly improved. Now, not all students will enjoy the flipped classroom, 
especially when teaching older students who have learned in a traditional classroom setting for all of their schooling. Not only is the flipped classroom an adjustment for the teacher, but for some students as well. This feedback was very valuable though, because it was one of the reasons I started posting a link to my video notes and made them available to download. Also, note that both students 2 and 3 mentioned the enjoyment of learning by doing the group activities and investigations. We can't forget that all learning is social and students need opportunities, especially in math, to discuss concepts and ideas with their peers and learn from them. Finally, student 4 mentions the importance of being able to access and print the lesson notes so they can take the notes with them in their binder for easy reference. As we draw to a close, I want to thank you very much for your time today. I know that your time is precious. I very much appreciate your learning with me today. Just one final reminder. If you haven't done so already, please click on the subscribe button, give us a like, leave a comment, and share this video with your friends. I have lots of video resources on my channel to help you with your flipped classroom and other resources available on my website, ejfullerton.com. New videos and resources are posted a few times each week. Also, check us out on social media for a behind-the-scenes look, additional information, ideas, and more. I'm Eric. Until next time, take care and keep learning.